boot or given new responsibilities is rife the president is expected to inject young blood in his cabinet this might see the likes of Jose and Suramukhopa Marupini Ramukhopa and even current cooperative governance deputy minister Tembi Ngadimeng leading in his new cabinet two former non MPs Ino Kondongwana and Ibrahim Patel have now been sworn into parliament, leaving room for the likes of Ngadi Meng and his head of infrastructure, Ramukhopa, to make the cut. CD Madia, Eyewitness News. Former public protector Tulima Donzela says she was spied on by the state security agency during her investigation of the Gupta family's unprocedural landing of a private plane at the Vatrikluf military base. Issues of security vetting have been raised at public protector Busisiwe Mkwebane's impeachment inquiry in parliament this afternoon. And on the power front, ESCOM has turned load shedding up a notch with stage 5 power cuts. The ailing utility says five generating units have gone offline at several power stations. South Africans can expect a downgrade to stage 4 load shedding from 5 tomorrow morning. A cloudy Tuesday in store for Gauteng tomorrow with scattered afternoon thunder showers. Both Joburg and Freenachung dropping to an overnight low of 16 degrees, peaking at 27, Pretoria 18 and 28. Lerato Huffler, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. So excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready? We're our sports worldwide. These things of sports, they must agree. You can score up to what? <laughs> because it, it's not right, those things they are doing of going to six, seven. <laughs> Our sports worldwide. It is another. It's seven for Liverpool. Sensational, astonishing, incredible. The greatest win against Manchester United there's ever been. Liverpool have ever put together against the old enemy. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. All the all the four coaches, none of them. I'm the only one now for the record. So they have the, 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 the coming coach has to come and break my record. Despite all of these achievements, you've been fired. For the best of the team. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Not your ordinary Monday. It's Reaction Monday. Hashtag MSW. It's a Monday. It is Reaction Monday right here on 947. You've all been waiting for this moment, haven't you? Yeah, we're also coming through live on Vuma FM, Rise FM, and on Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW across all social media platforms. 0607080484. 0607080484. That is the WhatsApp voice note number. And already we are jam-packed with so many WhatsApp voice notes. And you can only imagine why. In a second, we're going to be chatting to the one and only, the man that delivered this game last night. Turn and Salah is off on his bike. Salah's bike is a quick one. Gakpo through the middle. He's taking on Lissandro Martinez. He's sat him down. It's Gakpo! It's free! <laughs> Wonderful speed of thought and movement. What a beautiful, beautiful goal. What a sight, what a sound. What a moment in his young life. Stunning, stunning goal. Jordan Henderson here reading Liverpool Utopia. An unimaginable zenith for Manchester United. A crushing Madeira. 
inexplicable, illogical, irrational, scarcely digestible, barely conceivable. And there's what it does to the top of the Premier League table. Manchester United stuck on 49 points and surely now their dreams are dashed of catching up the top two. But Liverpool's prospects of catching up the top four are massively enhanced within three points of Tottenham Hotspur now and the right side of Newcastle United. A story at Anfield of restored faith, restored birth, restored appetite. That is Liverpool as you remember them. And that is Manchester United, as they would rather forget. Gakpo 2, Nunez 2, Salah 2, Firmino to put the cherry on the icing on the richest of Liverpool cakes. When you woke this morning, this was not even close to your thought process. It happened, Rebecca. It actually happened. <laughs> Seven. Incredible. Peter Drury, Graham Lasso, how football in seven days can drop you from hero at Wembley. Well, that's the incredible story, hey? Summarized nicely with the expert voice of legendary commentator coming through live from the UK, Peter Drury. Uh, absolute pleasure, Peter, having you right here at 947. Hashtag Marawa Sports Worldwide. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm good, Peter. I was going to say, have you taken a deep breath after that? I mean, if it's a record-breaking session uh, that's uh, waited, what, 92 years odd, what does this mean to you and your commentary career? Well, that was that was um, quite an extraordinary day yesterday. Um, <laughs> it it's, um, was a scoreline that nobody saw coming, um, not least because Manchester United have been so very good very recently. Um and Liverpool, of course, have had, by their own recent standards, a fairly pale season, though they have been turning a corner. I don't think anyone was especially surprised to see them play well, particularly in that fixture in front of their own supporters. But um, I think we're all reeling slightly from 7-0. <laughs> but where did that come from, though? It's a, it's a case of Eric Ten Hag. He's got his squad. He's got his players. They're all warming up to how he wants football to be played, to go on the attack. He tweaks a couple of positions here and there. Was that where the damage was done? Because first half, I mean, we had no idea that this avalanche was going to uh, take over in the second. Well, no, we didn't. And in a sense, you know, that's what makes it feel a little bit like a freak. And uh, Now, that, that is not to diminish in any way what Liverpool achieved in that game. Um, and I realise it's a pretty unscientific way of, of analysing it. But the truth is, now, for 40 minutes, it was a more or less even game. And then Manchester United uh, conceded just before half time. Fair enough. You, you started the second half thinking, you know, this could easily still go either way. But I, I guess if you're a Manchester United fan, and I know many millions in your country are, um, the thing that would have alarmed you was Manchester United's response, or perhaps you might say failure to respond to going a couple of goals down. When, when the ball started rolling badly for them, when the second goal and then very quickly the third goal went in, um, it felt as though they lost their shape and to some extent they lost their discipline. And senior players who've been at the, the very core of uh, their renaissance over recent weeks suddenly lost all of the qualities, all of the assets and attributes that had made them what they were. Um, and you can only rationalize it, I suppose, by saying that these guys, multimillionaire sportsmen though they are, are only human beings. And they just had a very bad day uh, individually and collectively. And Liverpool were so pumped for this game, so much depended on it in terms of their self-worth, if you know what I mean, because they've had such an ordinary season, Liverpool, the game against Manchester United comes to mean so much. Uh, and the Champions League option is now uh, alive for them again. And, and they simply made the moment matter. And, and they did so magnificently. I mean, a guy like Ten Hag would rely on a Fernandes for leadership. You'd rely on him for, you know, some form of bounce back ability and being able to get back into a game and show some form of leadership. But you could tell that somewhere because of the change of position, 
that maybe he didn't play his best game. And then there was frustration. And then there was, you know, Luke Shaw. There was off-the-ball incidents. Uh, there was shoving around. There was yellow cards. Then the frustration built even more, which meant that the discipline factor affected Man United so much more now because then the scoreline keeps increasing. W where do you call it even? Because the first thing Ten Hag talks about is lack of discipline and professional. Those are the key words he uses. Yeah, and that was surprising. And there's no question at all that discipline was an issue. Uh, and as you rightly say, a surprising issue because the the one or one of the key things that we, we mentioned when we talk about what Ten Hag has done to Manchester United is that he clearly has instilled discipline and he does have high standards. Uh, and he, he would have been mightily alarmed by what he saw in that regard. And, and you identify the players. You know, Bruno Fernandes, such a super player. But he, somehow his his wiring, his chemistry, appeared to go wrong yesterday, um, and and he did appear to lose his head, and and it became very tetchy and sulky, and and um, you know it, it didn't contribute as you as you rightly indicate any sort of leadership to the team, um, and and it got sort of out of hand to the point where Manchester United were were ragged. And um, Liverpool, as I say, pounced on that vulnerability uh, and, and United found themselves with no response. And you, you can only hope from a Manchester United point of view that they use that awful day to draw a line, to um, have a good look at themselves and to say that must never happen again. And, and very often the darkest hour does come before the dawn uh, and they'll have to hope that that was their darkest hour. I think there have been words that have been used in the past, uh, Peter. Um, I, I enjoy the words of controlled fury. And controlled fury is something that Liverpool have been seeking for much of the season. Uh, they haven't had it. And on this particular day, if we have to switch now, talking about Man United, and we switch on to the team that really brought the magic on, where and how do they rediscover this as a collective, not individuals? Well, I, some are saying it's a glimpse into the future, isn't it, with the new forward line, with uh, with Nunez and, and Cody Gakpo as well, of course, as the established Mo Salah. Uh, sparkling, they're learning to live together. Uh, you know, there, there is a, an evolution happening. They've lost Sadio Mane. They're about to lose Roberto Firmino. That, that famous established front three that made them champions uh, is and has broken up. Um, and maybe this is the beginning of the next era. Um you know, that, that controlled fury that you mentioned, I think, was very much in evidence. Um, nothing switches the switches of Liverpool Football Club like a game against Manchester United, which they feel obliged to win. Um, and, and I guess they would say of themselves that a performance like that has been waiting to happen. It, it has been a, a season of, to some degree, transition, but that is not to hide from the fact that it's been a a season um, very largely a disappointment. But they have spotted, as we, as we head into the final third of that season, that there is a potential route to salvation. Uh, and salvation would come in the form of a top-four finish. And given that Newcastle and Tottenham both lost on Saturday, that top-four finish is, is really accessible for Liverpool now. Um, and they played with a sense of purpose as if it really mattered, as if they had a target back. They had a, a reason for being back. Um, and, uh, and boy, their people responded to that. I mean, you've watched a couple of players walk onto Anfield, being new, uh, you know, having all sorts of criticism being thrown at them, Peter. And Darwin Nunez has been one of those players. I mean, yeah, he hasn't come through and won the crowd over immediately or even the supporters worldwide. But he's just kept a very firm and very calm head. I think he's kind of allowed the criticism to wallow a little bit. But he comes on, switches things around. Cody Gakpo, as you say, shows what he has showed the world before. So firstly, let me go back to Darwin Nunez. What, what have you made of his impact? But most importantly, when it mattered the most at Anfield against Manchester United? Well, I, I think it's admirable, you know, because he came in and as we all remember, right at the start of the season, as, as he wanted to get his feet under the table, become established, he had a mad moment. He got sent off against Crystal Palace, uh, and that set him back. It would set any human back, you know. I, I think we sometimes forget that these guys 
um, are young men, very young men, who've come thousands of miles from foreign countries, not necessarily speaking English, into our league. And we expect them to be superstars straight away. And that's not fair, you know. And, and when they come into the league and they have an early setback like that, listen, it was his fault, it was nobody else's fault, but he's, he's made a human error. Uh, he's immediately, just as he's getting started, forced himself to go into a period of suspension. And so there's no momentum to his launch as a Liverpool player. And it's taken him a while, I suspect, to get over that, that massive disappointment. And now that he has, and now that he's having a succession of games, and now that he's got the crowd with him and he's got wind in his sail, um, it's evident what a fabulous player he is. And, and he certainly showed it yesterday. The entire world, Peter, has watched for a couple of seasons. Salo Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino. I mean, one of the most potent of striking forces that the world has seen. Enjoyed so much praise around the world. We've seen Sadio Mane leave. The, you know, gap has been formed. We've seen that. Now Roberto Firmino says, OK, I'm going to be leaving. And that was uh, as early as just uh, prior to the weekend on Friday. And then he comes on, he scores a goal. Great. I think that's what Bobby brings into the Liverpool team. But right now, though, what are you visualizing in terms of the future? So if uh, Firmino's gone, Sadio Mane has gone, what are you seeing forming up front for Liverpool? Well, uh, Darwin Nunez, Gakpo, Jota, as well as Salah. You know, that, that's, there are four names. Uh, they can be the new famous four, Fab Four, whatever you want to call them. Um, and th- there is um, an abundance of talent there. there. There should be stacks and stacks of goals at the feet of those players. Um, uh, every team has to evolve, you know. The, the, the Mane, Firmino, Salah era has been and gone, and it was a brilliant, brilliant era. But um, there's no point dwelling on that now. It is a thing of the past. It is history. Um, and, and so... The, the, we, we live in a, a professional football world where a lot of the conversation is around recruitment and Liverpool have had to go and recruit. They've had to evolve. Um, and now um, what we witness will bear witness to how successful that recruitment has been. And, and right now, certainly in, in the immediate aftermath of yesterday's game, where Gakpo, as well as Nunez, who we've already discussed, Gakpo was absolutely terrific you would think that Liverpool next season will be ready to challenge properly again right at the top of the Premier League. All right. I suppose those are the words that uh, Liverpool fans would love to hear. I've got a couple of voice notes uh, for you, Peter, that we will have a listen to just straight after the break as we take um, our final and second segment uh, with uh, Peter Drury as he joins us live from the UK. And I see on social media lots of uh, questions, uh, voice notes. And also be in touch. Remember, hashtag MSW Marawa Sports Worldwide on 947, live on Vuma FM, Rise FM and on Sowetan Live. The number in studio is 011-8838-947. 8838 On a Monday, it's hashtag MSW. And on Monday, especially, it is Reaction Monday, which is the beauty of it all. Uh, you get a, a front row seat uh, to react on so many different levels. And I know getting voice notes about the Formula One. Of course, it was there. Uh, we'll chat about that as well. So still plenty more to come on the show, but we will come back from the break and have the legendary Peter Drury as he chats to us about every single bit of high and low that you would have experienced yesterday as the world was gobsmacked with what they were seeing right in front of them. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Share the epic with the new Samsung Galaxy S23. Pre-order yours and we'll upgrade you from 256 gigabytes of storage to an epic 512 gigs at no extra cost. That's more space to store and share all your epic moments. Pre-order now and we'll also gift you with a Galaxy Tab S6 Lite for a limited time only. Samsung Galaxy S23. Share the epic. TNC Supply.
Can you feel it? Ah. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. That's the sound of expectation. The sound of goals being met and dreams coming true. It's the sound of anticipation as you take on the day better than you did yesterday. Hey, I'm not not it's more than just vibes and fun. It's growth. It's impact. It's the people around you getting inspired. All because you chose to take that extra step or because you chose to do you. You can feel it too with the upgraded Suzuki Espresso designed to give you an extra edge when you do you. Uh -huh. Contact your nearest Suzuki dealer to book a test drive now. <coughs> Suffering from a cold, flu, or sinusitis? Try Foltex Mucus 200. It's an affordable, effervescent mucolytic that breaks down thick and sticky mucus to help clear the airways and relieve snotty noses and phlegmy coughs. Foltex Mucus 200 is available in a tasty orange flavor and is suitable for the whole family. Speak to your pharmacist about Foltex, available over the counter. The 2023 Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards are coming to Nicktoons DSTV Channel 308. And it's time for you kids to pick your favorite. Visit kca.nickelodeonafrica.tv to vote for your favorite African stars and kidfluencers. Then keep your eyes on Nicktoons to find out who wins the KCAs on Wednesday, the 8th of March at 4 p.m. Only one month left to get the Specsavers 2 for 1 deal. Get a free pair of branded single vision sunglasses up to the value of 3,100 Rand. Yes, free branded prescription sunglasses. To qualify, simply purchase a comprehensive eye examination and prescription frame and lenses. Visit us today or book online for our 2 for 1 promotion. Specsavers for affordable eye care and a whole lot more. T's and C's apply. on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, the former Chip United coach, Morgan, thank you so much for your time. Summarize that letter. You felt very emotional. Super United, as I said, they, they, there is no coach who has ever won four, four games in a row. All, 30, all 30, 34 coaches, none of them. I'm the only one now for the record. So they have, the, 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 the coming coach has to come and break my record. Despite all of these achievements, you've been fired. For the best of the team is to get someone who's going to help the team to win more matches. Are you retiring from coaching altogether? I, I have, Rob. I have. I have. Because? I'm more stronger when it comes to admitting straight. Let me stick to where I'm stronger on it. <laughs> MSW. Hashtag MSW. Not your ordinary Monday. It's Reaction Monday. Hashtag MSW. Good evening, Rob and uh, Peter Drury. Uh, Peter Drury, I can maybe uh, say to you that uh, in South Africa, uh, we had the late uh, a poetic uh, commentator, Kabo Manyapelu, who used to say, football has no therefore. And in those words, Peter, uh, would you have anticipated that uh, uh, Liverpool and uh, Manchester United, looking at current form, that uh, Liverpool were going to put seven goals behind Manchester United? And also, Peter, I can say that uh, your voice is missing in the EPL matches, uh, particularly uh, when my team Arsenal is scoring those late goals that need your voice uh, to uh, picture and provide that uh, electrifying and poetic commentary uh, 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 for us. And all the best. It's Teboho here. Teboho, thank you so much. He says football has no therefore. Peter Drury is my guest here tonight as we unpack what happened over the weekend. Legendary commentator coming through live from the UK. And, uh, you know, the, the surprising thing, Peter, is that the commentator who's now late uh, is a former colleague. He loved Liverpool. 
a lot of people were just uh, saying that he should be smiling from the heavens. Klebo uh, Manyepilo, may his soul rest in peace. Because he, he used to say, and he translated, he used to say, football has no therefore. As in, therefore, this will happen in football. Football, there is no such thing. There is no therefore. Does that make any sense? Because yesterday didn't make any sense to anybody. No, that's a, that is a beautiful way of putting it, actually. What a, what a lovely turn of phrase. Um, because it does sum up the whole um, illogical nature of, of what happened yesterday and what so often happens, certainly in the Premier League, where we think we know for sure what's happening next. It, it very, very often makes us look like fools. Um, and, and yesterday's outcome made a lot of people look like fools because uh, it was quite unforeseeable. Um, and that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? Sport is about humanity. Uh, and humanity is at uh, once flawed and brilliant. Uh, and yesterday we saw flaws that we didn't think we'd see, and we saw brilliance that perhaps has been hiding for a little while. Uh, and it added up to um, an extraordinary narrative. Obviously, the most uh, common question that you also heard from Deborah saying, your voice is missed. Well, I, listen, I miss you guys too, I do. I'm very, very lucky. As, as you may know, I'm broadcasting the Premier League at the moment with uh, NBC in the United States. Um, I, I was lucky, actually. I came back and did a, the Arsenal game the other day, which uh, some people might have heard. Um, but and, and I hope to do a couple more games before the end of the season. But uh, I'm a very lucky guy. I'm, I'm working um, for America at the moment. But uh, I feel very strongly... Um, the absence of the connection that I, I had with uh, South Africa, with, which it was great, incidentally, to rekindle during the World Cup. It, it was lovely to be, to be back with you guys then. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll be reconnected at various times over the, the coming months and years. But believe you me, I, I miss you um, more than you miss me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Peter, I mean, just as hearing you describe the game and uh, how it started when we started the interview uh, kind of brings those memories back. Uh, we'll get to Arsenal in just a second. Let me quickly play this voice note. Shabalala! Goal for Bafana, Bafana! Goal for Africa! Chabolina! <laughs> hey, Rob, man. Uh, hi to Peter Jury and you, Rob. Uh, a man, a poet himself. Uh, yeah, man, uh, he brings so much into the game, the emotions and all that you need in a game. He brings the game alive. Uh, say hi to, uh, to a big man. And there's this one, Rob, uh, from the Argentine. Maybe you might ask Peter Jury whether he knows that commentator. I, I got a task, man, when I was listening to that. Argentina, come on, tell me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Trans. I mean, that, that's crazy, though, because you always say to me, Peter, it's a passion. It's something that is ingrained in you. you. You love the game. You love what you do. But it's the impact that it has on people. Yeah, it, uh, I, I also say to you, Rob, don't I, that I, I try, if I can, to separate myself from the event uh, because, uh, in the end, whilst it's a lovely privilege to be able to describe these fabulous moments, including uh, Argentina winning the World Cup, um, that those moments belong to the athletes <laughs> and not to the broadcasters. Uh, and it's really important to remind yourself of that, um, which is not to, to detract from the joy of describing them, or indeed the joy sometimes on a good day when, when that description uh, connects with an audience which appreciates it. But, um, you know, it's, as I've said to you often before, Robin, it, it, it is a great joy, and um, it, it's, it's lovely when, when people are kind about it. Hello, Bro Rob, and to the legend Mr. Peter Drury. Um, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Drury if... Um, What's his take on the Man City charges? And uh, we've been hearing and online and on social media that um, the charges uh, they they can be stripped of their titles if if found guilty. But my main concern is that commentary of the Aguero goal in 2012. What will the FA do if Man City is found guilty? Uh, will they take it down from social media and YouTube? Will we lose um? 
all that great commentary from over the years because you made uh, you made it very interesting to watch and it was really you took us to another spectrum with your commentary so it, it, what's going to happen if man city were to lose their titles thank you so much peter i don't know for me it's a man city charge it's not a peter jury charge <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very difficult question that to answer, and, and thank you again for the for the kind comments. Um, obviously, because these things are legal, one has to be very careful what one says. So, all, all I would say is that if Manchester City's achievements over the last decade or so were to be, in some sense, stained by these um, accusations, which, by the way, are not proven, um, but are out there then um, it would clearly be a great, great shame. It's, it's not for me to say whether they would um, lead to, as it were, the, the withdrawal of all their great moments, the withdrawal of all their trophies. But um, we all of us who love sport, I'm sure everybody who's listening, and you, Rob, and, and me, we all love sport to be pure and proper and fair. And um, I, I just want to believe that those moments have been just that. I, I don't pretend in any way to be an expert on the business of sport. I just love the playing of the game. So I'm afraid, like everyone, I, I sort of watch on helplessly and and hope for the best that those wonderful memories that we all share are not going to be um, spoiled. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get back on the field because, you know, there's so much hope that's hinging and every single day you watch uh, Arsenal and you see there's something special. You know, they, they play over the weekend and you think, ah, it's done and dusted. And some superior goal of the highest quality comes through, nails it back of the net, three goals, three points, and they march on. Is this seemingly from where you sit, one that they can put in the bag or, you know, the wily eye of a Pep Guardiola with Man City knocking behind cannot be overlooked. Well, Arsenal are a beautiful story and um, another really great human story uh, around, first of all, their decision to stay with the human who is Mikel Arteta. And he was under substantial pressure early in his Arsenal career. People were wondering whether it was going to happen for him. And my goodness me, it is happening for him. So that is lovely. Um, it's lovely that they have such a young, vibrant team. Um, because Saka, probably the best example within that team, a guy who had a bruising moment or two in the very early years of his career and could have reacted either of two ways. He could have started to go missing, but he didn't. Um, he showed immense pride as well as humility. He's a humble guy and he does wonderful things. Uh, and he's not the only one in that team, by the way. They, they seem to be a really good bunch of people. Um, and I thought it was lovely, incidentally, that the winning goal against Bournemouth at the weekend was scored by Reese Nelson. Only because, again, this is a guy who hasn't played a lot of first-team football recently, who, who might feel a bit um, fringe, a bit uninvolved. And he got to have his one glorious moment. And it's in moments like that that you do find yourself thinking this is almost meant to be. It feels as though it's leaning Arsenal's way um, almost irrevocably. They, 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 everything they do is turning out just right. And it's only because we know how good Manchester City are and we all of us understand that it's perfectly uh, possible that Manchester City will win the rest of their games, that we know um, Arsenal haven't yet got it done. There are still 12, 13, in some cases, 14 games to play. There's a lot of this course still to run. Um, but Arsenal's involvement at the very top is an absolute delight. I mean, a delight that includes Europa League playoffs. They've got to play sporting. You know. So it's not just about the Premier League. And a lot of people would say, where, where do they shift their focus to? Uh, the bottom line is what, Peter? They've got to shift their focus to football and to silverware and to anything that has to do with the game and improving their standing in world football. Yeah, I, that, that is a very interesting one. I, I posed that question to someone else myself. What happens when the European football um, kicks back in, as, as you rightly say, it does this week for them? Um, I find it hard to believe, given the position they now find themselves in the Premier League, that they would prioritise anything other than the Premier League. Uh, I'm sure that all of their substantial eggs will be in the basket of 
keeping on winning in the Premier League because that would be a wonderful, wonderful achievement. Having said which, when a club has momentum, uh, the best thing to do is to keep that momentum rolling. So they are not going to abandon their European campaign. There is a great chance of going all the way in that competition. There's no reason why they shouldn't. Um, and there are so many um, examples. There's a very recent one, which I'll come to in a moment with Tottenham, of a, of a team um, when all is going well, deciding, right, OK, this is a cup competition that we need not prioritise and failing perhaps to give it the attention it needs. Uh, and then things go flat. Um, and that could affect the league form. And I'm pretty sure, I may be proved wrong, that Nicola Arteta will want to put everything into the European campaign just to keep the ball and the wheels rolling along for Arsenal. Last week, Tottenham played in the FA Cup against Sheffield United in the Championship. They made six or seven changes to their team. They put a weakened team out. Harry Kane didn't play. The plan being that, A, they should be strong enough to win that cup tie anyway, and, B, they would be fresh and ready to go and play at Wolves in the Premier League at the weekend. Well, they lost the cup tie, and then they lost in the Premier League as well. And, and a momentum which they had built up has, to a large degree, dissipated. Uh, and I think there's probably a lesson to be learned from that. And I'd be surprised if Arsenal made the same mistake. Yeah, absolutely. And also Tottenham Hotspur coach that's been coaching remotely, uh, putting his uh, deputy under a lot of pressure. So, yeah, there have been a lot of things happening at Tottenham. Let me go to Newcastle. Natty is on the line. Natty, good evening. How are you, Rob? I'm great. I'm great. Peter Drury is here. Rob, uh, first before Christian Peter Drury, let me thank you. You've made the, I don't know, my year or my dream come true. You know, every time when I listen to that guy come, doing comments or, or, or on, on television, you yeah. know, it's my dream to speak to him. Hello, Peter. Hi, it's a lovely uh, pleasure and privilege for me to speak to you too. Thank you. I, was, uh, I don't know what to say, but uh, okay, fine, I'm okay, and I'm very happy to speak to you. Peter, I... I, I I won't even ask you a question because I know you are an expert in, 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 in what you are doing. One thing that I would like to tell you is that, Peter, you are one of the best commentators I respect. But uh, I would like to ask you one thing. I don't know whether I will say your favorite colleague or the favorite guy. If Peter Drolli, let's say you are Nati and I am Peter Drolli, if you were not number one, who do you respect as the best commentator? Because... For me, you and Martin Tyler, you are the best in the business. But uh, but I want to hear from you. Nothing nice. One. All right, let's listen on the radio. We've got all of a minute left to the Peter. Is that a fair question? You uh, have worked with so many in the well, world. Who's your favorite? My favorite. Well, listen, I'll be careful because a lot of the football commentators, of course, are my friends, and I couldn't possibly um, choose between them. I tell you what, I I love listening to the cricket commentators, and so I'll pick one of them. My my favourites are, are Nasser Hussain on the cricket. I love him, former England captain. I love Ian Smith from New Zealand. Um, I love the Aussie guys as well. I, I love people um, in the sport that uh, it's my hobby rather than my job. And, and they are great articulators of it. And I must say, if you're looking for someone in football, then I go back to the, uh, my early days of BBC Radio, where, in a way, I became inspired by people in the 1970s and 80s. They were great linguists and describers of the game. I think well put, Peter. And um, I'm sure you know that your light shines throughout this entire South African country, the continent of Africa. And may that good work you do continue to shine and make you the top-notch commentator that you are. And I think it's about the knowledge. It's about the color. It's about the flair you bring into the game. And I know you never really want me to praise you, but... It's my duty to do that. Otherwise, I'll never get a chance to do that. And I do it all the time, Peter. So you'll, you'll learn Bless to live you. with it for the rest of your life, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, always an absolute joy to be on with you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much, Peter. We'll chat soon, eh? Take care. All the best. Thanks so much, Peter Drury. They're joining us live from the UK. Unbelievable moment right here, 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and of course, on Sowetan Live. Don't go anywhere. The show's far from over. Marawa Sports Worldwide, changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. Right, new shoes, a mani and a pedi, a spa day.
And I'll need a new dress for that girls' weekend getaway. What else? Uh, what are you doing? I'm planning how to spend the 35 grand cash. What? Huh? You bought a new GWM P-Series and you got a 35,000 rand deal assist and you took the cash option. You got the kitted out buggy. This is how I'm going to use the 35 grand cash. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, dear. Pursue life and visit pseries.co.za to book a test drive. T's and C's apply. Get ready. Get ready. Ultra. For Ultra Self. Ultra Self. Adam Bayer. Alesso. Fisher. Goldfish. Yoris Blur. Colch. Oliver Helder. Timmy Trumpet. Sakes by Tweedy and Moe. Saturday, 11 March at the Expo Center, Nazareth. Ultra. Tickets at ultrasouthafrica.com. Ultra. Ultra South Africa 2023. United we dance. Do you hear that? That's the sound of my well-rested family protected by Expander Pro security barriers. One of their pros came out to my home and gave me a free security assessment. All my custom-made security gates and burglar bars were installed within days of placing my order. I was so impressed with their service, quality, price, and guarantees, I even got roller shutters installed at my business. Visit expander.co.za to request a quote. Expander. Real security for real people, real fast. Lotto Star Scratch Card Games are the perfect way to scratch for your dreams. You could win payouts of up to 255 million rand in seconds. Win diamonds with Diamond Rush, supercars with Ferrari and Aston Martin, your dream life with Retirement Fund, or cash with Bank Balance and many more. Scratch now. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotus Stars, licensed by the Mpumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006 008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. At Burger King, we call our new combos king size combos. Why? Because Burger King's king size combos are fit for a king and really big. Get our full size, 100% pure beef everyday items just at a better price. So if you're really hungry, we have king size combos perfect for you, or you and friends, or even you and the whole family. Save up to 70 Rand and get more food, more taste, and more value. Try the new king size combos only at Burger King. Sage gives businesses like Brian Habana's access to the right insights at the right time, reducing complexity and enabling compliance. The quicker you can make a decision by the information through which you receive that, the quicker that decision making comes. Become a Sage customer like Brian and set up your business for success. Visit tax.sage.co.za today. Sage, helping business flow. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. I mean, what a decorated refereeing career he had. Our legend, Victor Schumer. What do you feel about the, the, the age issue and when you should retire? If you check in England, how old are those referees in the Premier League? It's Some are closer to 50. Yeah, yeah. So FIFA has changed that to say if a referee is 45 and he can still continue, he should be allowed. So hopefully now that Gomez is in charge, uh, he might effect those changes. Because uh, you see in England. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They are old. Yeah, yeah. And when they run the fitness test, they run the national fitness test, they still pass those madalas and do the games. What's your view on VAR? Everyone who criticizes referees is using VAR. Uh, I'm telling you, some of these red cards that we see missed could have been changed and by VAR in the country. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Not your ordinary Monday. It's Reaction Monday. Hashtag MSW. Hi Rob, hi Peter Drury. As having seen it all and experienced it all, are there any plans to retire anytime soon, Peter? It's JT from Centurion. Putum Dala, my report. Each of the Yofunela Uzwane assistant as Oge Ituba, the experience of I was one. And no man, you funnel and coach of us as an eye. Moba, I am at Uzwan and Bella, we am seen to Kokashi chiefs. Never make a man and Ganga, Walla, and I want to bang a pair. Long have you called me Safunda Glake Mukala would in work for the CNs. The CNs illegal on to Glamanya Makem, Sasha Makola, Bama Bila Bama Tat, Zana Bandavanga Pele, I look at Hamga. Good evening, Miss Marawa. Uh, Miss Marawa, it's long that I've what happened over the weekend has forced me to come out of retirement. Marawa, I'm disappointed with Kaiser Chiefs. Every time 
we Kesa Chiefs is playing 10 against 10 men, but they can't take advantage. The goal difference is so pathetic, but it seems like the coach has no clue on how to take advantage of a team that is a man shot. I don't know, maybe I'm too harsh on the coach. Maybe it's the players that we have, but it's really disappointing. Then coming to the EPL, where I'm so happy about my team as now, they are really proving that they are strong title contenders and I believe uh, we are going to take that uh, coveted EPL league title. Uh, well, the less I speak about Manchester United, the better, but there was a drubbing. Really, I was shocked to see Manchester United conceding seven goals. But anyway, that's football. Thank you, Ms. Marawa, for the wonderful show. Edgar again from Puluwa. Welcome back, Edgar. Hey, Joyce. This right-hand side for Liverpool has been fantastic all afternoon. Alexander-Arnold, Elliot and Salah. Elliot, Firmino, Salah! Liverpool flex their muscle to the power of six. A dozen reasons to believe that Liverpool are back. Yeah, just half a dozen reasons, man. To believe Liverpool are back, to believe that hashtag MSW is back, to believe that you're listening to the show right now. Reaction Monday. Okay, we're going to be chatting to coach Brandon Truter in a second. Uh, but I'm sure all Formula One fans are quite happy with Red Bull's uh, Max Verstappen uh, starting the new season as he ended it last season. Uh, a dominant victory there in the Middle East. Now, the two time champion leading in the Bahrain uh, Grand Prix almost what from start to finish, initially lapping at a pace beyond his rivals and then controlling the race. So, the drive though for Verstappen's 36th victory underlined his status as favorite for a third consecutive world title yeah we definitely had the car to fight for the podium i mean honestly i think the the podium was uh, there we, we we had a good gap behind i was managing the pace everything felt good so it is a it is a shame but uh, yeah, yeah now i just hope we can uh, look into it understand what went wrong and uh, and yeah uh, don't have this problem anymore happy that it was kind of smooth sailing i had a great start um, got Fernando in turn four, and I was like, oh, seeing like, oh, geez, this is a, this is a great start to a race. And felt like one of my better like opening laps. But then I just was sliding around. I couldn't turn. I had so much understeer at the beginning. I took so much wing out. <laughs> I couldn't get around some of the corners, uh, and I just couldn't keep up with the guys ahead. But my miss didn't was good. And then at the end, just so close to catching um, Carlos, but not good enough. I think also the car was working in, on every compound we, we we put on the car. So. Um it looked a bit, of course, lonely out there, but there's still, of course, a lot of things to uh, to look at and fine tune. But overall, of course, very happy to uh, to win here. Well, it's a very unique circuit. We cannot forget that. We will go to very different circuits. So I think after four or five races, we will have a bit more of an idea. So let's wait and see. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot uh, to everyone in the team. Uh, we didn't expect to be that competitive. I think we didn't expect to be in the podium, to be honest, in 2023. We thought just to start the project. Uh, change the concept of the car, try to be in the midfield or in the in the front part of the midfield, and then eventually in 2024, you know, get closer to the top three teams. And we find out that uh, we had the second best car in, in Bahrain, just behind Red Bull. So this is just a, an amazing surprise. All right, we'll take your comments as well regarding that uh, Formula One Grand Prix. Let's remind you this day in history, Real Madrid was founded on the 6th of March, 1902. It's since grown to become one of the most uh, internationally acclaimed clubs, uh, standing currently as the richest football club in terms of annual revenue. I'm sure Real Madrid is also one of the destinations that uh, coach Brandon Truter would want to end up coaching. Well, we caught up uh, with the coach a couple of times, also not so long ago. And one thing that always, always stands out, this man is... His never-say-die attitude. Now, he doesn't give up easily when the odds are stacked up against him. Came through at Sekukuni United midway through the season. Hasn't always had it his way. But I tell you what, he's going to be quite pleased, though, with the side's uh, gallant performances. And with the season drawing closer to an end, uh, let's catch up with the man they call Brachis. Brachis, in fact, down in the mother city. Good evening, coach. Good evening and welcome to the show. 
Uh, good evening, Rob. Good evening to all the listeners. Uh, absolute pleasure to be back. Yeah. Would you say settle down now? Yeah. Um, would say settle down now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm here in Joburg, not in the mother city. So, so yeah. Just looking at the games, though, and, and, and I was having a little BDI look at what was happening over the weekend. D- describe that. Describe that ninety minutes. Yeah, I I don't feel it's a it's a game we we should have lost. Um, first and foremost, um, one crucial mistake just before halftime, and was a turnover on the halfway line. Um, we. My my player, Makwana, gets stuck in the end at 50-50 ball. He wins it, he turns it over. We go on, on a 3v1 situation. But, um, yeah, um, pulls out and it gets turned over and one ball into the penalty area. And Nikomobi was overloaded and they scored from it. So, And then second half progressed. And as the game went on, we, we had to commit and we had to take a risk to get um, at least a draw or point from the game. And at that risk, we left, so we left ourselves a bit of a bit exposed at the back end, of course. Um, they got out on the counter and then they scored the second one. But um, if you look at the stats, um, we had 12 attempts at goal. That's, that's without a set place. I think we had some very good, good deliveries at free kicks and also corner kicks where we could have scored. We put them under pressure. All in all, we had about 16 attempts in that game, and there was no goal to show for it. And the same with the Cape Town City game as well. 14 attempts at goal and no goal to to show for it. But um, I've always said it's it's work in progress. It's a new structure. It's a it's a new playing style that that no other team in South Africa plays. And I would have been worried if we didn't create the chances. But now. I'm, I'm getting worried that we're creating all the chances and we're not scoring. Um, but on the overall base of play position was 50-50. Um, the, game, the game was played at a very good intensity, end-to-end as well. So uh, they didn't trouble as much. I think my goalkeeper, Sangare, had one, not even one save to make because that, that ball came off a corner kick into his hands, a deflection. So no trouble at all, but still we went in. One only half time, and then of course, of course, with the risk we took, uh, we lost two more. So, so yeah, um, at the moment it's win one and lose two, and we'd like to 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 preach a bit of consistency. But so far, I'm happy with the guys. But um, mentally, it it does take take its toll. Of course, in in saying that as well, the the score um, going a goal down, it does affect you. Your mentally, it does affect your, your motivation. It does affect the confidence as well. So yeah, um, we have to be we have to be confident. We have to be um, resilient and grinding out results at times. But I'm I'm happy with the with the playing style. I'm happy with the structure. I'm happy with the tactical awareness also of the players at the moment. Yeah, I mean you've also had a couple of players warming up on the side. When I say warming up, but you're not featured, maybe not signed, uh, but training with the team. Uh, I, I could see the interest. Even the chairman was there over the weekend, which again shows that he wants a good finish. He wants to be in that top eight. He wants to cement a place in the top eight uh, for next season. I mean, any word on any of the players? I don't even want to mention them by name. I will if I need to. But any of the players that we know of uh, that have been training with you that might sign? Um. Yeah, of, of course, it's no secret that... that uh Supercisu Villagas is training with us. Um, I'm sure there will, there will be an announcement soon. Um, there's, of course, a, a player that stands out like Kamohelo Makocho, um, international, um, signed from from um, from the MLS, from, from played in Europe as well. Um, of course, he's not playing at the moment, but that's purely because um, he has to, to be patient. Um, the players that has been playing, um, has been doing well. Um, Mabasa came back into the team this weekend. And then also we have the likes of Claude Le, uh, Lapile who's also um, getting back to his to his usual standards. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's a team full of talent, but um, the intensity, the, the high demands on, uh, at, at, on the training pitch, um, that's there. And that's what people don't see behind the scenes. 
Um, sometimes it get really heated on training, but that's the way I I I demand. That's that's the standard we have to set on training because there's no other player that knows you better than your teammate in the league. And if we can create that um, that stress, if we create that situations on, on on training, and then the game becomes easier on the weekend. So yeah, we we raise the ball very very high on on, on training. All right, just a, a, a couple of things. I know we, we got limited time, though. Uh, so you're saying Makocho signed? Not Makocho, yet. yes. No, no, Makocho was on the benches. He was on the okay. bench, and he also, he also came on in a, in a league game. Uh, yeah, twice already. Yeah, so I, I think by signed, as in, is it just up until the end of the season, or is there more a more long-term plan, a couple of seasons, to wrap up his career? Of course, um, currently now, um, at Carmel, um, I'm, I'm assuming at this moment, but um, also speaking to him and his agent as well, um, it is uh, it is to finish the season, and of course, there's an option to extend after the season. Um, right now, there's, there's no complaints. Um, Look, he came, he came in unfit, haven't played in a while. He also comes in uh, on the back of an injury that he's done the rehab and he's healed completely. He passed the medical test as well, so the fitness and the match management was missing. So we're working on that, and it's it's, it's very close. It's very close to to getting into the lineup. The the earpieces. I, I know this sounds like we're doing a television <laughs> show, um, but it's also important uh, that the communication when it comes to referees is top notch. I mean, you you all come prepared. Uh, for what it is, but I, I do believe that it was lacking in this game. What is your observation, and what's your feeling about it? Um, yeah, I was actually alerted to it by by, by my my staff that um, there was an offside call or something like that. And, and when I asked the fourth official to speak to the linesman or, or, or the referee, and actually give us some um, some indication into to why the decision happened what he took and he had no earpiece on and I said guys it's 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 PSL it's the highest league in South Africa it's the one of the most watched leagues in Africa we see earpieces so they they couldn't answer me but but that's that I don't want to talk too much about referees so otherwise it, 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 it will sound that I'm complaining about it and and at this moment I think um in the media um, there's been enough criticism um, hold towards it. Um, I don't want to also jump on it. Um, for my focus is purely on my team, and and we had over enough chances to to get the three points on that day. So yeah, I don't want to sound sour or anything like that. I no, absolutely. But I think I think you're in a professional league that if if something is deemed to be uh, you know, a bit short on professional that we must raise it. I mean, Ace Tobo was here in studio the other day, so we we need to accumulate as much of this information as we possibly can, so we throw it back uh, at him. Any final word, though, to these supporters? Uh, the possibility of a top eight finish. 30 seconds uh, from your side, coach? Yeah. Um, yeah, the top eight is definitely a possibility. Um, so far in the coaching career, this hasn't been a season which I didn't finish outside the top eight. Uh, we are on the right track at the moment. I do appreciate the messages after the game. And as I was here um, this past weekend, but also at Cape Town City, um, they're happy with the, the, the football we are dishing out at the moment. Um, we really appreciate your, your encouragement and your, your words from, from uh, Babinik, uh, Babina Noko supporters. We, we really appreciate it. And we we want to see on the weekend as well. We a cup game this weekend at home. Um, the number of supporters is growing game by game. And we can only repay them by, by winning the game for them on the weekend. Um, right now it's a bit inconsistent, but we are preaching consistency and we are we are building something for you that to be very, very proud of. Well, I think a lot of uh, supporters will be happy and proud of uh, the work done so far. And I'm sure you'd want to start a new season next season with the club, start with them with preseason and everything else that is on. Coach, thank you so much indeed. Brandon Truter for joining us right here on Marama Sports Worldwide. Always a pleasure, Rob. Thank you and good night and be safe out there. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much the Coach Brandon Truter joining us right here on Marawa Sports Worldwide. All right, that brings to the end the show for today. Join us again tomorrow. Well, a big thanks once again for all the WhatsApp voice notes, and especially our guest today, Brandon Truter and Peter Drury. 
Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.